Ms. Yancey, have you reviewed or listened to or read or in any way seen any of the trial testimony in this matter since the trial started? No. Okay. As you testify, please talk right into that microphone so your voice is picked up clearly. Please make verbal responses to questions being asked and try to avoid speaking at the same time as anyone questioning you. With that in mind, Ms. Rawlings, you can inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. Would you please state your name and spell it for the record? Angela Yancey, A-N-G-E-L-A, Y-A-N-C-E-Y. Angela, where were you employed in 2019? Sugar Salem School District. How long did you work there? Seven years. What was your job title? I was the payroll and benefit administrator. And what were some of your job duties with regard to that position? I processed payroll for all of the employees and I assisted with all of their benefit administrations. Was it part of your job to process employees' insurance applications? Yes. And this would have included life insurance? Correct. Are you familiar with Tamara or Tammy Daybell? I am. Do you know if she worked for the Sugar Salem School District? Yes, she did. What was her job? She was the elementary librarian. And I think you mentioned you processed benefits for employees. As part of that, did you run benefit meetings for the school employees? Yes. Every year during open enrollment, we would go to each building and hold meetings that informed them of any changes to their benefits. And we brought forms if they were to make any changes. So you informed them of any changes. Would you also discuss open enrollment periods, life insurance changes, that type of thing? Yes. And when would the open enrollment period be for the school district? It started in August, excuse me, and they had until the middle, about the 12th to the 15th of September to get the applications back to us to be effective as of 9-1. And what types of forms did you provide to the employees at these meetings? Change forms for their medical, dental, vision, life. And do you recall if Tammy Daybell made a change to her life insurance policy in 2019? She did. Do you know if she submitted an application for that change? Yes, she did. Did you process that? I did. If I were to show you a document purported to be part of that, or the application or part of that, would you be able to recognize it? Yes. And, Your Honor, I will be asking to have States Exhibits 151, 152, and 153. These have already been admitted, but I'd like to publish them for the jury so that the witness can reference them. Okay. And, Your Honor, may I have permission to publish so the witness may reference? You may. I think it's more like the easiest to read that way. Yes. Do you recognize what's been marked as States Exhibit 151? I do. What is that document? This is a change form to her voluntary life insurance. And do you know, when you say change form, is that a different application than what had been previously made? Yes. When she was originally hired, when I present the life insurance, voluntary life insurance to them, they can elect a minimum of $10,000. And so that would have been her original form. And then the way the benefits worked is any time after that during open enrollment, you can increase it. Okay. So this was a request to increase. Do you remember when she was hired? 
um, I believe in 2017. Okay. And do you know um, what the amount of life insurance was on that 2017 application? She elected the minimum of 10000 And in 2018, did she make any changes or request any changes? She did not. So then in 2019 on this document, she requested to increase the policy? Correct. And did you process that paperwork? I did. Who signed that request for the increase in benefits on her application or the change form? Um, uh, Tammy did, and because she elected spouse coverage, her spouse uh, also signed it. Okay. And would that be on a different page than this first page? Yes. And when was this form signed and dated? September 8th, 2019. And then the form would have to be turned into your office, is that right? Correct. Okay. What date would the increase in the life insurance have gone into effect? 9-1. Okay. And so what was the total amount of the life insurance policy for Tammy Data once this change went into effect? So she elected the max, which was five times her salary at the time, so it was 80000 And then she also had a 50000 from the group life. Okay. And were you involved in or did you assist in a claim being submitted with regard to collecting on her life insurance policy? I was. I'm going to show you what's been marked and admitted as State's Exhibit 152. If I may, Your Honor. You may. Um, and do you recognize that document? I do. What is the title of that form? It's a beneficiary statement. Who submitted the beneficiary statement form? Um, her husband, Chad. <laughs> and did you meet with Chad Dable when he provided that form? Or I provide him with that form, excuse me? I did. Do you recall when you first met with him? He came into my office um, Monday morning um, after Tammy had died. So she passed away between Saturday and Sunday, and he was there Monday morning. And I want to back up a little bit. You had said you worked in HR for the Sugar Salem District since 2013. Is that right? Correct. Where did you work before that? Madison School District. And were you responsible for helping employees of both school districts process life insurance claims? I was. How many times would you say you have assisted with processing life insurance claims? I'd say roughly 15 or so. And so you said that Chad came in on October 21st, which was the Monday after Tammy had passed away. Mm -hmm. And um, in your experience, was it unusual for a spouse to come in that soon to process a life insurance claim? In my experience, yes. What conversation did you have with Mr. Daybell when you provided him with the form on October 21st, 2019? I explained to him that uh, we could not submit a life claim until we had um, the original death certificate to go with it. And he said, that's okay, I've already ordered eight of them. And in your experience, how many death certificates do most people order? When they share that information with me, the I've heard maybe three at the most. And do you know when Chad returned to submit this beneficiary statement? He returned on October 25th. I was out of town, and so my coworker told him that he would need to come back on the 30th when I was back in town, and he was there on the 30th. And who fills out the information that's contained on that beneficiary statement form? Chad did. So the information regarding attending physician and such is filled out by the spouse typically? Correct. And drawing your attention to the notation that she died in her sleep, would that have been filled out by Chad Daybell before bringing the form back to your office? Yes, it was. Now I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 153. And do you recognize this? I do. What is the title of this form? It's the employer's and or administrator's statement. And who fills out that form? I did. 
And so you recognize this as the form that you filled out? Yes. What did you do after Chad had brought in the beneficiary statement? I completed this statement and then attached the uh, death certificate and submitted it to the life insurance claim or company. And so when would you have filled out the form? I did it that day that he brought it, the brought, 30th. Brought in the death certificate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we talked about the increase in life insurance that Tammy had requested in September. What's the amount of life insurance on this form, if you can see it? Um, it says it says fifty thousand for the basic, which is the group life, and it says ten for the voluntary. Um, her her change form had not been filed in her file yet, and I used the information from her file. So you didn't have the the change or the updated or the increased information. Correct, but it had already been submitted to the insurance company, so they had the correct information. And so what was the correct amount? Eighty thousand. And so what was the total amount that would have been paid out for this life insurance claim? 130. And do you know if that's the maximum amount that could have been requested for an employee in Tammy's position? Yes. I don't have any other questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Fellings. I got a few things. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. So um, there were a few different life insurance policies on Tammy, is that right? It, with our school district, there was only two. Okay. One of them was the group insurance, right? Correct. All right. And that's offered through the school district um, as a free bonus for every employee of the school district, correct? Every eligible employee, yes. Right. Any eligible employee is somebody who works full-time. Correct. All right. So if you're a full-time employee, you don't really have to fill out anything. It's just part of your package, your benefits package. Correct. There's not an enrollment form. We just require a beneficiary form. Okay. And in this particular case, the beneficiary was Chad Daybell. Correct. And she indicated that Chad Daybell would be the beneficiary. Yes. And he didn't come in with her to fill out that beneficiary form, to, form to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. So the 50000 was offered to every employee. So now we're going to the 80000 Um The first year when she enrolled was a $10,000 enrollment, uh, the, bare, the bare minimum you can get, right? Correct. And I, I believe, if I'm correct, I'd, and I'm probably not, it was somewhere around $1.93. Uh, was that a paycheck or a month? Um, well, the school district pays monthly. So okay. It'd be the same. So it'd be a dollar ninety-three a month. Correct. With a ten thousand mm -hmm. dollar life insurance. Correct. All right. And then I believe the seventy-five thousand dollar one uh, had uh, something around fifteen dollars a month. Is that right? I'm. I'm. I don't know the exact amounts. It's done by age. So whatever her age was at the time okay. is, is what it is. But uh, on the form that I guess we can bring up the what? Yeah, let's bring up the last two exhibits. State mm -hmm. exhibit one fifty-three and. 152. I'm sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you look at 151. that okay I can yes all right so we were just talking a little bit about uh, the ten thousand dollar one and, and it is what a dollar ninety eight a month is that right yeah it's a little blurred but that looks right okay and then the seventy five thousand dollar one would be how much fourteen seventy fourteen seventy nine or is that seventy I'm by <laughs> 70. You're right. My bad. 1470. Uh, and then $80,000 would be a little more than the 75, Correct. right? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so in your, in your uh, work, that this is part of your work, 
Is it often, what is your experience with how much people normally get? Do they normally get the maximum? It all depends on the individual and what's going on in their life. Um, we we just explained that they, if they initially elect the ten thousand, then any time in the future they can elect up to their five times their salary. Um, and so it's it just depends on the individual. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that open enrollment is only one time a year. Correct. And it's about a thirty day period. Correct. And in this particular date, it was. When, August to September, or when, when was it, do you remember? For a school district, yes. We started in August when they come in, when they, the uh, employees come back to work, and then they have until the, about the 15th. It's a grace period in September, but it's still effective 9-1. Okay. So this was within the grace period? Yes. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Can you redirect? I don't have anything, Your Honor. All right. Can the witness be excused?